Greetings, 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 and welcome to Heal Talk Tuesdays with Lisa. It's so good to be here with you, isn't it? Well, for those of you who don't know me, my name is Lisa Bubari, your favorite expert hypnotherapist. Today is April 23, and I have a special program uh, for you today. Today's program is called The Darkness of Our Past, Lights Our Future. Today I have a special guest also, and we're going to be talking about a lot of things. And that is going to be um, heartfelt, it's going to be raw, direct, loving, and informative. So I'd like to introduce my guest, Susan Kurjian. Would you please introduce yourself and give take a moment and introduce yourself. Hi Lisa, thank you so much for having me here. Hi everyone. My name is uh, Susan Kurejian. I'm born and raised in uh, Baghdad, Iraq. I've been living in the United States for 24 years. I have three beautiful kids, two boys and a girl. My uh, oldest one, he's 21. His name is Peter and Gary, he's 20. And my youngest one is Sarah, she's 13. Wonderful. It's an honor to be here today to talk about our history, Armenian genocide. Ah, she gave it away. So today we're going to be talking about being an Armenian. And for those of you who do not know, uh, by descent, I am Armenian. And actually, I call myself a mutt because my father was Persian, my mom Armenian, grandma from Beirut. So I've got the whole Middle East and I've been in America since 1974, and I consider myself more of an American. But that is what America is all about, is this potluck of nationalities, religion, race, everything. But today's special program is truly about what is happening tomorrow, which is April 24th, is the day that we remember the Armenian Genocide, that happened in 1915. And for those of you who do not know the history, it was uh, the genocide, the massacre of 1.5 million Armenians by the Turkish Ottoman that happened in 1915. Uh, my grandparents were a part of the genocide and uh, grandma was born 1910 and uh, grandpa was born before that and they marched marched to uh be, with the orphanage with the american red cross and they were taken to beirut uh, so i think this entire thing about armenians being from everywhere and still maintaining our identity and who we are so why Susan and I, because we come from two different backgrounds, two parts of Middle East, mm -hmm. and you have experienced genocide in a different format of your own, whereas mine was a story told by grandma, a real story, a history. So let us talk about yours before we go any further. So before I start talking about my experience, Armenian genocide, uh, April 24, 1915, on Saturday, mm -hmm. when uh, 200 uh, members of the community, Armenian people, got arrested. And later that day, uh, most of those people got killed. And um, it took two years, and during that time, 1.5 million Armenian victims died and the genocide it's the memorial day of those victims that we celebrate their lives on April 24 yes my today it's not only a day to talk about the Armenian genocide today as well it's very special to me because in a few days it's going to be the four years when we lost my beloved grandma mm. and being here and talking about 
my childhood, my favorite childhood with my grandma and being in my grandma's house and she's telling us about the story about the Armenian genocide. So my, um, my story is my grandma, she lost her parents to Armenian genocide mm -hmm. and she, uh, she was an orphan kid who got adopted by family and uh, raised by them. And later in the future, she found that she has a three siblings, two sister and a brother. And telling us those story and telling us all the story about the life of the Armenian people, it impacted our life. It shaped me to the person who I am today because of my history. Of course. The memory that my grandma, she kept alive through her story. That's the history of our Armenian. That's it's that's who we are today. Exactly. We will go over that, but I wanted you to talk about your impact from where you come from. I, uh, like I said in the beginning, I born and raised in Baghdad, Iraq. Since I remember, I was eight years old when the war started. I in was Baghdad. In Baghdad, I was playing outside on the street and in front of my grandma's house. Okay. And the war started since that day until today. There is a war in Baghdad. There is a war in Middle East. And the thing is, there is a war inside every and each one of us. Okay. The difference is who we are today and what we believe. And, uh, and yeah, I grew up in a war. and I During war? During the war. Okay. And what year was this? Uh, 1984. Uh, when the war started in in, in Baghdad. Baghdad, yes. Okay. Uh, so, talking about the war in Baghdad, my I remember when I think about my grandmother, uh, she practically raised me. She was the matriarch of our family, and the keeper that brought everyone together. And she did that because being an orphan. Um, after the march when they were taken to Beirut, she met uh, my father, actually grandpa, and they married in 1925. So when they were just 15, 16 years old and they were put together and they were just brought together, here's a boy, here's a girl, and you connect with each other. And, but, the impact of that, the genocide, was when grandma used to talk about it and she would tear up and everything. What impacted me the most, which just recently has been the seed that planted my nonprofit, was when she became a motherless, which Thousands and thousands of children became parentless, motherless, fatherless during that time. And when she would talk about it, it was when they were during the march, her mom falls and one of the Ottoman Turkish guys uh, on the horse kicks and says, leave her be. And they drag her over her mother's body. So this child which was my grandmother remember that and would go over it all the time and throughout the years she wrote just journals and journals and journals but you know what it's it's by rewriting we release by expressing we release so being our patriarch and being a part of the genocide, it has empowered us and instilled in us something. What do you believe it has instilled in you? I know for me is strength, is uh, tenacity, is marching forward, and I like to call it never give up, but that is what she taught me. What did you learn? The same thing, don't give up, be strong, and and... Uh, don't let anything uh, uh, stop you from your dream. Mm. Keep going. Keep going. And uh, there is a light end of the tunnel. Right. There is a light end of the tunnel. And 
their light it's our end of the tunnel that is and this is what my grandma's she said and my mom too uh, don't yes. ever give up of your dream of course no matter where what we went to through that's not gonna stop us where we need to be right so tomorrow April 24th if you are anywhere which is uh, close to Glendale in Los Angeles area uh, we have a huge congregation of Armenians in California from Fresno uh, Los Angeles Montebello and we all come together we unite on this one day to do a march it's a march not as a protest but it is a march to raise awareness to be recognized and have everyone around the world recognize this day the same way at is as it is recognized for bosnia rwanda and all the other genocides that have happened throughout the years and i think most people know about the armenian genocide so have you ever marched have you ever I gone on only, the march i did only once um i live a little bit far away and coming to hollywood it's really hassle and traffic so i did only one time and it was the experience the best experience in my life mm -hmm. as a growing a lot of people they ask me why do you march on right. april 24 why all armenian around the world march on april 24th we close shop we do exactly we and uh, my answer like anyone any armenian answer is we walk we march for justice we march for a human right yes. we march for the victims all those lives who perished we march for recognition and we will keep marching until the justice served yes <clears throat> and yeah this is who we are this is our history yes and i truly believe we come together on that day um we hold hands we sing we speak uh in a way of recognizing and honoring honoring all those who perished in the name of uh, the armenian uh, heritage so just four years ago we celebrated our hundred uh, year and this year will be a hundred and four years ago so um, but every year we stand up together and that is the beauty of it coming together the unity the unity of a child a mother a father grandparents and it doesn't matter who we are when we are together we are one yes. and i believe that is humanity it is doesn't matter if we are uh, a different generation the same way as when 9 11 happened we all came together everyone comes out to help and we don't recognize not that we don't recognize it doesn't matter at that very moment if you are black and white if you are in color or what your religion is we we don't ask we come for help and that is what we do tomorrow we stand strong for our ancestry and it's an honor to say where i come from and who I am today is because of them yes. and because of my grandparents. Uh, I remember growing up, our grandma, my grandma, their house was next door to us. And from our balcony, we could go to my grandparents' house and back to our house. And we were on the second floor. Believe it or not, she was the dictator. And yet she was the one who loved us all. So they went through so much and they, the things they saw, but at the same time, she was so childlike. She would hug everyone, welcome everyone to her house. And 
we as Armenians, we are very fruitful and nurturing and giving and sharing with food. Every Everything is about food, right? Yes. We must feed everyone. Yes. We are yes. famous with our <laughs> delicious food. Right. And the first reaction of the people, oh my God, you have a lot of delicious dishes. Yes. And your, your house is always warm and open and your heart is big and you love everybody. And this is the reaction that we get from everybody. That's true. Because this is who we are. Yeah. And doesn't matter where you came from, you came from Middle East, Lebanon, Syria, anywhere in the world, right. we are one. Exactly, exactly. We are one. I remember um, grandma, she would wake up every morning at five o'clock in the morning, open the door, and talk to father to her it was father and to me it was amazing because she read uh, the bible five times the entire bible in her life she knew so much about world information she taught herself when she came to america how to drive mm -hmm. uh, and got someone to help her drive she had never driven in her life and at that time when she was living, uh, there was the fires that happened in Glendale and the fire was right behind her house. The fire department came and they parked right in front of her house and they were evacuating everyone, but she would not leave. She would say, if I could survive the genocide, I know God is keeping me and I am safe here. You stay with me. We are safe at home. And believe it or not, do you know what we did? When everything, all those fires and the bushes were happening, she was making sure that all the fire department, all the guys were fed and they had Turkish, the Armenian coffee being served for them. She made fruit. So in a way, when something traumatic happens, how we cope with that that's where heal talk and heal within comes. How we deal with uh, trauma, how we deal with war, how we deal with such dreadful, dark times in our life is to know that the end of the tunnel or our life can be light as we all come together in light yes. in their memory mm -hmm. and the things that we want in our life, the goals, the aspirations that we have. You have come to America. You have a husband, kids, family. So, and I think that is the beauty for us to appreciate where we are today because of them. They walked the walk. They marched. And that's why we are reaping the fruits. We are, and the only way to keep going and to keep their life, uh, their memories alive is to share their stories, exactly. to share, to keep sharing their memories, sharing their memories with our kids, with mm. our grandkids. For our history to keep memory, their memory to, to be alive, the only thing we need to do is to keep sharing. Yes. Because without the memory, we are gone, we are lost. Right. So here's my question. Um, do you have a nugget, a nugget of a memory, a nugget of what grandma or your parents would say or share that it would be beneficial for my viewers right here? Mm. Nugget something that to share yeah um, so we can inspire our audience it can help them overcome the war trauma tragedy how did you cope with it how did you come up with it but more importantly a nugget love mm. it's a huge it's a big thing love that's number one and uh, family um being together and helping each other and uh don't ever forget where you came from mm. as in i am telling everybody i am very proud to be an armenian right 
the love of my grandparents, the love of my grandma, and the love of my family, it kept me alive. Of course. And I'm here today because of that. Of course. Uh, one of the nuggets my grandmother used to share and she would always instill in me and our family was never ever forget where you come from and what happened to us. But make sure you never keep hatred in your heart. Yes, amen. So that is what I grew up with. And she would light a candle in memory of her parents, in memory of grandpa, my uncle, because when she was taken to Beirut, she lost her mother, she lost her family, she lost her siblings, and uh, she didn't have anyone that she knew of. And it was in Beirut, and she would tell us the story that sitting one day having popcorn, and she would call it buddy buddy, uh, that she was having that and a woman passing by recognized her and said Rosa is that you and she said yes my name is Rosa and she said oh my god your brother is only a town away I must take you to your brother and I think that is exactly what happened to your grandma mm -hmm. and to your family that so many were separated not knowing if a part of their family was alive or not and years later i remember my great uncle and my grandpa who was the world to me and i've spoken about him so hatred was never a part of me no matter who it was and believe it or not the people who saved my grand great uncle were the turks they kept there was even in the turkish empire they were the good ones yes there is you know so i think in humanity there is the good the bad in all of us yes in all of us and so we can't blame one over another and there's always good people so surrounding us with genuine authentic good good-hearted people and opening the door to all is humanity even what just happened in sri lanka right just a week ago not even a week ago it's recognizing that yes there's people who are heart wholeheartedly doing what they believe in the name of their religion and destroying others that there is the good in them too it's sad it's impactful but how we overcome that is the most important thing and the nugget of that is having more compassion and re recognizing being present being prayerful speaking honoring respecting yes. and recognizing that there is justice there's always justice we cannot serve hate by hate. Thank the you. only way we can serve hate is by love. Yes. Love each other and forgive each other. Mm. Forgiveness and love. If we forgive the people who hurt you the most, the world will be a better place. Because they will have no power. Yes. Yeah. Exactly. Forgiveness and love and, and just let it go and move on. And it's not only for you when you forgive and love and you move on. It's for your family. It's for people coming. It's to, for the future as yes, well. Yes, it's for, for the, the future. Yes. It's for the future. And for us tomorrow when we march around the world, Armenian people will march. We don't march by hate. We march by love. Unity. We march by light. We march for the memory of those victims. Yes. It's not about hate. It's not, it's about love. Correct. So um, let us uh, take a few uh, 
if there is any messages, if there's any questions you have of us, by all means, would you please, we'll be more than happy to share or uh, respond to any comments that you have. If you are present right here, hello, Michael, hello, Loretta, hello, Elijah, Lori, Bradford, Meher, Annette. Thank you for all of you being here. Uh, yes, tomorrow is also sad, a sad day, a strong day, a powerful day. But we are the ones who are the strength. If you are here, thank you for the hearts and the emojis. If you are watching this on a repeat, let us know that this is a repeat. If this message resonates with you or someone that you know, by all means, share it. Uh, you can even watch this on our YouTube. And I want to say... Um, we're getting messages over here. I'm trying to say, please uh, uh, bear with us. And uh, what would you say? For me to end this uh, amazing uh, interview or the talk, I want to say that um, God bless Armenia. Mm. God bless United States of America. Amen. And God bless you all. And... Uh, like I said, we are here for love, and yes. we will continue our love, yes. no matter what. No matter what, we have to love and forgive. <laughs> um, what I like to do is, uh, in closing, uh, do something completely different. A, a small little prayer, a prayer um, right here that I have. I'm sorry, I have to move this for just a moment. And, uh, okay, there you go. All right. And it's uh, a prayer. It's just a small little nugget. It's the consequences of karma are definite. And negative actions always bring about suffering. And yet the positive actions bring us light from the remembrance. So when we do that... Taking, taking this moment and remembering all your loved ones from your grandparents, from your ancestry, no matter who you are and where you are around the world, and also where you come from, your parents, good, bad, right, wrong. It has created and made you exactly who you are. And that is the biggest gift. And what I call your gift is within you. What we do with all our past history, it's remembering the history and yet recognizing that today it is up to you to create the story that you want to march forward with that, to help your next generation, your children, your students, your colleagues, to understand one thing. We all have a gift. And being here today, I thank you for being present. And may you accept appreciate and honor who you are with that we're going to do something special and just a moment i'll be right there okay all right have forgotten okay where is it i am right here okay. i am present okay Okay, so what we're going to do, sorry about that. Are you ready for this? I am ready. Okay. We're going to light a candle. There you go. In memory of my grandparents and yours. In memory of mine. And we are lighting 
these candles in memory of our grandparents, your grandparents, your ancestry. And I have at least a hundred candles. And I would love to light a candle for the names that you would like to give. All you have to do is just send a message or you also, you can share it over here. And I would light a candle for each and every one of your family members. And I will do that tonight. So in their memory, may we all march forward together. And I thank you, thank you for so being much, present. Lizzie. Thank you so much. And thank you for having me. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. This has been beautiful. Thank you. And the best part is I'm starting this year um, our Facebook Lives once a month. I will have guests. And what a beautiful beginning. Thank having you, so you much for having me. It's an honor to be here. this being the beginning of our um, shared guest programs thank you until thank you. next week i wish you god's prayer blessings and the universal light surround you protect you and god bless you amen bye-bye bye, -bye. bye. Oh, i'm gonna keep that light Mine too yeah <laughs> i was just yeah. about to blow it and then i'm like no we're gonna uh, let it go we're going. yeah we're thank you Yes. Goodbye. Goodbye. Talk to you soon.